Hello, I'm Jonathan Van Bilsen from Photos and Travel, and this is travel news you need to know. Unexpected swimming may soon become the norm in Amsterdam. That's right, Amsterdam, like so many European cities, is showing signs of aging as major infrastructural challenges are surfacing after years of unheeded warnings. An overabundance of tourism, nearly 18 million visitors annually, has had a very adverse effect on the city. And while the recent COVID-19 restrictions have given the Dutch capital a reprieve from over-tourism, it seems the city has more pressing existential crisis. Hard as it is to believe, Amsterdam is in danger of crumbling into the water it was once built upon. A major reconstruction project seems to be the only thing that can save it. Fortunately, the destruction which has taken place has not yet caused any injuries. But if the millions of dollars worth of repairs are not attended to, it will only be a matter of time. After several incidents involving collapsed canal walls, an independent report concluded at least 5% of the city's 200 kilometers of brick canal walls are in a poor state of repair, heightening the risk of subsidence. A repair budget of 22.5 million euros or 35 million Canadian dollars a year is being made available for maintenance work. The process of replacing the walls and bridges is made more complex because of the limited working space on land and water congested by the presence of houseboats. In the past, this has slowed down even small repair projects, but with time running out, officials are now expediting these processes. Visitors to Japan can get reloadable passport smart cards called PASMO. It can be used for public transportation, some taxis, and for purchases at some vending machines and stores. Look for the PASMO logo at checkout. The card can be purchased at Haneda and Narita airports and at many Tokyo metro stations for an initial cost of 2,000 yen, about 25 Canadian dollars. Money can be added to the card at ticket vending machines at train and metro stations. The card expires after 28 days regardless of how much money is loaded onto it. A passport has to be shown to confirm that the holder is a traveler. PASMO passports also offer discounts at participating hotels, restaurants, and activities. For more information and a list of participating locations, visit the website on the screen. Eating might become chilly in France. At the beginning of August, France's government announced a ban on outdoor heaters for at restaurants, cafes, and bars, citing their environmental impact. The order also includes a ban on restaurants keeping their doors open while using air conditioning. Another waste of energy. A government official stated that the ban would not begin until after the winter of 2021 so that restaurants hurting during the COVID-19 pandemic can seat people outside with heat to help those businesses recover. Anyone traveling to Portugal can buy nationally sponsored travel insurance, which includes coverage with restrictions for full medical care, emergency medical evacuation, and repatriation, as well as, unlike most insurance policies, coverage when a trip provider cancels or interrupts a trip because of COVID-19. A traveler canceling or interrupting his own trip due to fears of COVID-19 will not be covered. The insurance provides coverage not only on mainland Portugal, but also in the Madeira and Azores archipelagos. Luggage storage in cities is always a hassle, that is until now, with the Radical Storage app, which is free for Apple and Android users. Travelers in more than 70 countries can find locations nearby that will store their bag for small fees. Each bag stored with Radical Storage is insured up to 500 euros or 750 Canadian dollars. To use the app, Open it on your smartphone or tablet and choose one of the many nearby drop-off locations that appear. Then pay the fee, which is typically about $9 Canadian per bag per day, and simply take your luggage to the location, show the code, and away you go. From our Only in Australia department, the Sydney Visitor Centre is helping potential visitors learn more about local COVID-19 restrictions and assisting with future trip planning via digital consultations. To schedule a consultation, email sydney at visitorcenter.com.au. Digital video consultations can be scheduled via Skype or Zoom. Those without access to a computer with a camera can schedule a phone conversation. For more information, visit the website on the screen. 
Are you a fan of Czech food? With Taste of Prague, visitors can taste 10 to 12 traditional Czech recipes at four restaurants with local beer and wine included. The three and a half hour tour involves walking about two kilometers through Prague led by a local foodie. The maximum group size is 10 and the cost is about $150 Canadian per person. Those who want to take their own food tour of Prague can download a foodie map for a small charge with advice and recommendations at the website listed below. Staying with the subject of food, a great site called Good Food Ireland is a website designed to assist travelers in finding eateries and shops across Ireland. Recently launched as a new experience, travelers can browse and book food experiences in the country on the new webpage. Experiences include cooking classes, tastings and tours, and activities such as brewing and foraging. Led by local farmers and producers, experiences highlight Irish ingredients. For more information, visit the site on the screen. Want to go mountain climbing? On the Dutch Caribbean island of Saba, which has to be one of the best kept secrets, visitors can hike the Elfin Trail from the town of Zions Hill all the way to the top of the island's highest peak, Mount Scenery, which is about 900 meters, and it takes about an hour. Following footpaths that farmers took to their plantations early in Saba's history, the trail was reconstructed in 2018 and features relics such as stone steps and rain catchments. An interesting note, Saba is part of the Netherlands. Since the highest European point in the Netherlands is Valserburg, on the border with Belgium and Germany, which is about 300 meters above sea level, Saba's Mount Scenery is technically the highest point in the Netherlands. Imagine skiing on top of an energy plant. That's just what's happening in Copenhagen, where a clean energy power plant with a rooftop ski run, Copenhill, has opened in Copenhagen, Denmark in October of 2019. Skiing is offered year-round, even in the summer, using specially engineered plastic and wax skis. Copenhill has two runs, a beginner course and an advance. The full 450-meter course-long slope starts about 100 meters high and takes two sharp turns on its way to the bottom of the building. The cost is about 150 Danish kronas, or about 20 euros. Equipment rentals cost extra. And as we all know, traveling rules constantly change. With the worldwide pandemic still going strong, entering a foreign country is no longer as simple as having a proper visa. Almost every country now requires each visitor to provide proof of a negative COVID-19 test result taken within the last 48 hours. Another restriction a number of destinations are imposing is requiring foreign visitors to purchase international health insurance before entering. In some places, such as Aruba, the government's own health insurance must be purchased upon arrival. And lastly, after a disputed election in Belarus on August the 9th in which the ruling president, Alexander Lukashenko, claimed 80% of the vote, mass protests were held throughout the country on multiple days in favor of the opposition. On the night after the election, a large protest was held in the capital of Minsk, which resulted in more than 3,000 arrests, with police firing tear gas and rubber bullets at protesters. During further rallies in the capital, the protesters, numbering in the hundreds of thousands, clashed with police, resulting in at least four deaths. During the protests, Lukashenko was seen flying above in a helicopter, wearing a bulletproof vest and holding an assault rifle. Protests are rare in Belarus, where in the Soviet style, the government owns both the media and most industries. That's it for now. I'll be back next month with another travel news update. Please email me your questions and comments. I'm Jonathan Van Bilsen for Photos and Travel, where we bring the world to your doorstep. And always remember, travel safe.